Hello, poetry fans. This is Jim Ransom returning after a long Christmas and New Year holiday. Hope you've all been busy and keeping warm and that you've read or written a few poems during the holiday. Way back in 2021, I did a program on cowboy poetry, which is a genre all its own. I thought it might be good to go back and read some more of those poems. You may know that there is a yearly cowboy poetry gathering in Elko, Nevada for the past 30 years or so. And this was, uh, let me see this. Uh, this, this is the book that I'm reading from today, Cowboy Poetry. And it was inspired uh, by the poems that were collected from that group that appeared there in Elko over the years. And still, they're having that, of course. Um, <clears throat> PBS brought this to the public's attention many years ago. And I can remember um, them having Baxter Black read his cowboy verses to the audience. Uh, and I didn't even know there was cowboy poetry at the time. At first, it wasn't considered poetry by the old-timer cowboys if the poem didn't rhyme. But pretty soon they got over the shakes when reading their poems, which was the first hurdle, and some began to write in blank verse, and that was very controversial. But now it has been accepted and widely used, along with rhyme. So let's get to it. The first poem I'm going to read is by a cowgirl, Teresa Jordan, and the uh, poem is called Old Anne. <clears throat> this is the book here. Okay. Old Anne, the arm that hadn't healed right would not bend to hold a hairbrush. Hack it off, Old Anne said of her braid, that braid like blood flung from the heart, so long a part of her that thick gray snake slung heavy down her back. Young Charlotte, wide-eyed Charlotte, stroked the shears, reached out her hand to touch the braid, and drew back. Please, child, Anne said. Don't be afraid to help me. So Charlotte cut, and old Anne closed her gray, sun-tired eyes. The hacking made her think of falling, the colt falling, rain-soaked limestone soil slick as oil, slicker, and a boulder field cut jagged at the bottom of the hill. The heavy braid hung loosely now by just a few thin strands. The scissors sawed one last time through. It fell. The soft thud she remembered just before she woke, before the pain set in, the young horse stunned on top of her had just begun to twitch. That's a pretty neat poem. <clears throat> and Teresa Jordan um, is not new to this kind of thing. She has received the Western Heritage Award from the Cowboy Hall of Fame for um, various script writing and poetry uh, activities. <clears throat> and she got a literary fellowship from the National Endowment for the Arts. So there, <laughs> you see, cowboy poets have, are with it now. She lives in Utah uh, at the present time. <clears throat> and that's a good place for cowboy poets to be living, I think. Okay, now, let's move on. <clears throat> to another poem by a guy named Mike Puhalo, 
who's a, who's been a rodeo cowboy as well as a real cowboy on the range and the ranches. Um, and uh, this poem is called Sage and Pine. Um, just a word about Mike Puhala. Uh, he, he was actually born on a ranch in Kamloops, British Columbia, because cowboy culture goes north of the border. <clears throat> and he spent most of his life as a, a horse trainer and a bronc rider, and uh, then also ranching. So he's uh, um, been elected to the British Columbia Cowboy Hall of Fame and the Kamloops Cowboy Festival Hall of Fame. He served for many years as president of the British Columbia Cowboy Heritage Society. So you see, cowboys aren't just an American, uh, a, 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 a United States phenomenon. They're going up to our friends north of us. So this poem is called <clears throat> Sage and Pine. I've traveled to your cities. And for some, they might be fine, but I find myself a missing the smell of sage and pine. Now, I'm just a country poet, not prone to fancy verse. My grammar is atrocious, my spelling even worse. My tales are plain and honest like the children of the soil, the cowboys, ranchers, and farmers whose work is honest soil. The urban crowd don't like my prose. They'll pick at every line. My poems ain't read in fancy theaters where they sip champagne and wine. And I sure ain't rich or famous, but that suits me just fine, cause you don't need fame or fortune to smell a sage and pine. <laughs> I love that. The sentiment of that is just right up the alley for me. And one thing I've noticed about most of these Western poems, poets, but not all, <clears throat> is that they have big handlebar mustaches. Not the ladies, of course. <laughs> and not this next one I'm going to read from, whose name is Vess Quinlan. He started uh, writing poetry and prose way back in 1951 when he was confined uh, to the house for nearly a year suffering from polio. Um, he, he currently lives in Alamosa, Colorado. And this next poem is called Grandma's Advice. You just can't let a cowboy run a ranch, she would say. <laughs> he will spend days, weeks even, showing a five-year-old how to make a loop land flat around a salt block and take weeks, months even, teaching a colt to set up just right. A cowboy will keep books on a barn door with a lead pencil, <laughs> never know he's going broke until the banker comes by in his pickup. I did not know until grown that she was talking about Grandpa. Isn't that a neat poem? I think it's really good. Um, so that's Vess Quinlan. And uh, then we're going to move on to read another verse by Vess Quinlan, which I think is um, <clears throat> and really kind of neat. It's called The Apology. Now let's see if I can find my place again. Uh, well, here it is, by golly. <laughs> um, the Apology. <clears throat> Did you ever step across a horse to the chill before the dawn <clears throat> and leave a woman wondering how long you would be gone? She'd know you were home when she heard you at the door. <clears throat> You never took the time to say what pasture you were headed for or 
thought that she might worry when you stayed out way late. Maybe lie awake and listen hard, trying to hear you at the gate. Did she think you somewhere hurt from a cow wreck or a fall and wonder where to look or which neighbor she should call? <clears throat> You're gray as granite now and careful. No careless cowboy anymore and decide to ask forgiveness for all the worry you caused her. Through a puzzled laugh, you hear her say, Oh, I slept right through the goofy things you do, because when we were 20, I was immortal just like you. <laughs> Vess Quinlan understands the nature of human beings, I think, pretty well. And um, <clears throat> now... I think I've lost my marker for this next guy, but I'll find it here uh, someplace. <clears throat> here we go. Here's my marker. It was it had fallen down into the page. <clears throat> this is called radio. No, let's start over. This is called Rodeo Poet Barnstormer, and it's dedicated to Spike Barkin. And there's an epigram with it from a, another poem by Guy Clark called Cold Dog Soup. Ain't no money in poetry. That's what sets the poet free. And I've had all the freedom I can stand. <laughs> 89 copies of your latest alliterative Lariati title, sans remaining space for one more iambic molecule of mold or mildew, one more black fly poop pepper granule crammed into the genuine split cowhide suitcase you finagled out, out of your widow neighbor in trade for your soon-to-be-released spoken word eight-track at her <clears throat> moving to rest home living state sale. You fly the loop the loop airlines to your next big gig. In your head you rehearse in pig Latin, straining to maybe make them funny. Um, the same ten epic poems you loosely remember thinking up decades ago. Their Rip Van Winkle barbiturate laced with melatonin potency clotheslines you into REM sleep so primal you dream that the aft luggage hatch unpuckered as the prolapse sphincter of pterodactylus dumps your poetic fusillade down like Ludifisk and Lefsa on the land of the other white meat outside Dubuque. Dewlap men in bibs and hip boots after the runic deluge peel pages off the sides of silos. Hug gazette headlights me. Plutonian spacecraft break up over Dubuque scatters doggerel debris. You wake up to the flight attendants. Bye 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 refrain spring for a two hour five block cab ride sign one free glossy press photo after your show get horn swoggled into swapping with slam cowboy boots from the Bronx, your leather bound limited editions for their mimeograph pamphlets and swear digging into a 4 a.m. LaGuardia garlic prosciutto arugula Asiago Jardinera vending machine omelet. Never, never to wangle your waddy back east again. <laughs> There's a lot to that poem. It's not a simple one. And I should have practiced reading it before today. But you get what you get. 
And it's worth the money you pay, isn't it? <laughs> well, thank you for all being with me today <clears throat> for another edition of uh, Morning Jim Poetry. <clears throat> and as you can see, cowboy poetry has adapted quite nicely to the 20th and now the 21st centuries. I promise to do another reading next week. Subject? Oh, come on. I have some ideas. But if you have a preference, let me know. Um, you can send me a text message or an email. Bye now.